Hello everyone and welcome to this video. If you are a pilot yourself or an aviation enthusiast, you might as well have seen headlines like these. Now, this is supposed to be the first of a two-part video series here. In this uh, first video, I want to talk about some uh, general information and about uh, some statistics about meteor collisions and how you can uh, avoid them using uh, some Swiss cheese, actually. I'll tell you more about that in uh, just a second. But first, I've just recently started this channel. If you want to know who I, I am, what I'm doing and what this channel is all about, make sure to check the introduction video that I did. I'll uh, link it in the top right corner here for you guys. Now to the video, I'll be starting out with a question here. When was the last time that you heard of a mid-air collision in the airline industry? If your answer is, I can't remember a single one, you might be just right because these accidents uh, practically don't happen anymore in commercial aviation. However, unfortunately, things are a little different in general aviation. Although there's a limited amount of studies on uh, mid-air collisions in the GA segment, it can be estimated that we have around about 20 collisions worldwide each year. And that's already a conservative estimate, I have to say. Now you might question why I'm bringing up the topic at all if being involved in a media collision is fairly unlikely. Let's be honest for a second. Nobody would ever board a passenger jet if uh, we read about passenger planes colliding in mid-air about twice each single month. People would eventually ask, is there no smart way to avoid these crashes? I mean, I can check the position of an airline flight in apps like FlightRadar24 in almost real time on my smartphone. Why do these guys keep crashing into each other? Well, happily they don't, but I think you could ask this same question in regard to general aviation's mid-air collisions as well. Now at this point I want to make clear that I'm not being paid or sponsored by anybody for bringing up this topic here. I don't work for any fancy av avionic company or anything just like that. But I do think there are relatively easy and cheap ways to get uh, rid of these accidents. I now want to continue by showing you an accident causation model that is used widespread in uh, aviation safety, also in engineering and even in our healthcare systems. And that analyzes why hazards on the one side lead to accidents on the other side and how this can be avoided. It's called the Swiss cheese model. And I'm not uh, making that up to prom promote any sort of Swiss cheese. You can believe me on that. Now in this model, layers of cheese act as layers of defense. So in our example, our hazard will be to have uh, two aircraft on uh, colli conflicting or coll collision courses, whereas the mid-air collision is the potential tragic accident. Now to avoid this uh, kind of outcome, we have uh, safety layers. The first one that is most commonly known, I guess, is uh, called, let's call it see and avoid. That means uh, pilots are scanning visually outside the uh, windshield of the aircraft and outside the windows for other traffic. See and avoid is undoubtedly the, our number one technique and measure we have to uh, reduce the chance of uh, colliding with another aircraft in flight. But if that worked out perfectly every single time, we wouldn't have to talk about it here. Now, I've heard pilots telling me, you know, these accidents just happen because pilots are getting complacent and doing their consequent outside scan and therefore crash into each other. Well, there's not many studies on the subject, but those that are out that I found while researching on the topic will prove them wrong. While, of course, scanning the sky in a regular manner will help and that is a great, great thing to do, see and avoid still has a number of limitations. Most of them are human factor related. I'll give you an example. 
When you're flying along and there's two other aircraft in your vicinity, one of which is on a collision course while the other isn't, it's actually much much more likely you'll spot the one that's not a threat. Now why is that? The reason is that this target, with the one which is uh, not threatening for you, will be moving along your windshield, along your fire field of view, while the other one, which is dangerous, will be just a steady spot on your windshield. Now the human eye is much better in sighting moving objects than in still objects. I guess this actually makes sense if you remember sort of the ancient days of uh, humanity where, let's say, a tree wasn't much of a threat while a wild animal jumping, behind, uh, jumping out behind the tree was. So um, these limitations form holes in our uh, cheese layers. Now I could give you more examples. You can't argue about limitations imposed by aircraft design, for example. You won't be able to see the area above your plane when sitting in a Cessna, while you won't be able to see uh, the area below your plane when sitting in a pipe or in a diamond. In more than 50% of meteor collisions reviewed in the study by the Air Safety Institute, one pilot wasn't able to spot the other guy because of these limitations. Another example, in an accident back in Germany back in 2012, a Roba and a Piper Saratoga collided while flying just before sunset. The accident report that the, uh, for one pilot must have been very difficult to spot the other plane because of uh, the low sun and the difficult lighting conditions. And there's still more. Let's be honest, no pilot can uh, ever constantly look uh, out of the windows. Sometimes you have to check your charts or your iPad. You might uh, be dialing in, uh, in another radio frequency or be talking to uh, a passenger in the back seat actually. Now of course you might be lucky 100 out of 100 times, but you might also be the one that finds out eventually that see and avoid isn't always enough to avoid the catastrophic outcome. Now some pilots stop at this point. They are happy to take the small risk because they, don't, they feel uh, that it can't happen to them. I've heard sentences like it's more probable to get struck by lightning or I'll win the Euro millions before something like this happens to me. While it's true that it's not very likely, I'm still asking why anybody would uh, take the risk if you can further reduce it. One way to do so is by adding another layer of cheese, another safety layer, which can for example be ATC. By providing traffic information, ATC can help a lot avoiding other traffic. Port Charlie Bravo, traffic 2 o'clock, 2 miles eastbound, 1,600 indicated. Actually, you'll be passing behind them. Turn right heading at 320. Right heading 320 on the traffic with a banner tow is inside the sky. Charlie Bravo. Now, in most European countries, you'll be contacting flight information frequencies. In the UK, you'll be requesting a traffic service from radar. The great thing about all that is that it's completely free. You won't have to do anything than just asking them for traffic information. Now I know many pilots often hesitate to contact ATC where it's not required. I still work freelance at uh, Switzerland's ATC provider, they're called Skyguide. I work within their training and simulation department. I'm playing pilots within their radar and tower simulation training. I know a couple of controllers and I know how they work. I can promise you that they are great guys. They are not interested in punishing anybody. They are very helpful and doing all they can to improve flight safety. So I tell you, there's no good reason why you wouldn't want to get in touch with them, asking them for traffic information whenever you can. Now, of course, the, this safety layer has got some holes in it as well. There, for example, might be traffic flying around, not having a transponder at all. Think of uh, sailplanes and even motorized aircraft from time to time, depending on the regulations. Uh, not everyone has to have a transponder everywhere. Secondly, ATC can be just uh, busy and might have no time for you, depending on the country and the airspace you're flying in. You might just not get the traffic service uh, that you requested when flying in the uh, United Kingdom. In other countries, even though you are in contact with uh, flight information service and you even got a transponder code, you're still the only one who is responsible for separation meaning you are that ATC is not legally required to give you uh, traffic information when uh, they are busy, for example. I'll give you another situation, another example. It's not actually always easy to translate the oral information you hear from ATC through your headset into a, a picture of the actual situation in your head. When uh, flying in busy air, airspace, you might get a call like 
Traffic information, two o'clock indicating 3,300 feet, not verified, crossing right to left. Additional traffic, 12 o'clock, 2,400 feet climbing, opposite, Cessna citation, report traffic in sight. And you might just be sitting there like, what? And you might be confused about where to look for what and uh, not get the right situational picture out of this call. A last example, and maybe the most obvious issue with this uh, safety layer, most mid-air collisions occur in the vicinity of an airport or in uh, the traffic pattern. Now when you're flying into an uncontrolled airport, there will just no, be no ATC around to inform you about traffic. At many airfields you don't even have to be equipped with a working radio in the aircraft. Unfortunately, my experience shows that the uh, position reports in and around the traffic patterns are usually poor, rather inaccurate or not being uh, done at all. Now, luckily it's the 21st century and we have another way of avoiding uh, mid-air collisions, which is uh, by electronic means, it's also called electronic conspicuity. That uh, simply means that uh, one transmits his position electronically by different means to make himself visible electronically to others. There are a couple of uh, different electronic traffic avoidance systems out there on the market. There are um, portable systems, there are fixed installed systems. The most common one in Europe is called uh, Flarm, but there are also systems receiving ADS-B signals, such as GPS positions of other aircraft in the vicinity. There are so-called active uh, traffic systems. I will uh, talk in more detail about those systems, what kind of traffic they'll show and what kind of traffic they actually won't show in more detail in a second video of that series. Now, as I'm said, I'm not being paid or sponsored by any mother manufacturer. I just think that uh, this third layer is a powerful one to help avoiding in-flight collisions with uh, other aircraft. I know that these uh, systems have their flaws as well, as uh, do all the other layers that I uh, mentioned before. As I said, there are planes flying around not broadcasting their position in any way. There might be uh, technical deficiencies and, or defects in the systems. The user might just misinterpret the digital image and underestimate the hazard. By relying solely on your electronic uh, traffic avoidance system, your visual uh, scanning might actually suffer and it might get uh, more likely to be involved in an in-flight uh, collision than without the system. But I can tell from my own experience uh, that when used in the right way, in the right manner, including the awareness that uh, it won't be covering all traffic, especially here in Europe, Electronic conspicuity is a powerful safety layer. I've been uh, flying quite a lot in the area around uh, Los Angeles in the past year. And uh, through the FAA ADSB out mandate, most traffic now sends its exact GPS position through ADSB. This means that you can easily and quite cheaply actually get uh, all the traffic displayed, for example, on your iPad. I can assure you that it's a great help to improve uh, your situational awareness regarding the traffic around you. It will uh, focus your attention in times of distraction through oral warnings. Traffic, 12 o'clock, 2 miles, 1000 feet above. And it will uh, help you where to look for traffic actually, where and what direction. Now, if you're not convinced, uh, just ask a friend who has maybe access to an aircraft with an electronic traffic avoidance uh, system. Take a flight with him. I'll tell you, you'll be impressed uh, by how much more traffic you will spot on that flight. You might always have uh, felt quite secure because you never saw all the other guys in your vicinity. Now, maybe you agree to what I'm saying, but uh, maybe you're like me, just uh, renting from a flying club or a flight school and you can't uh, decide on the equipment that's in the aircraft that you're renting. I promise you, you'll still be able to make a difference by just asking the boss of your flight school if he could fit uh, his planes with Florm or ADSB out. He might of course say no because he finds it's too expensive, it's, uh, but after the third customer asking for it, you will at least start of, uh, thinking of it. If you have the choice, you could uh, join the flying club whose planes do have traffic information systems. If you're a member in a flying club, you'll have uh, at least the chance to bring forward a motion during the annual meeting 
to equip the club's uh, fleet with traffic avoidance systems. Now maybe you're really lucky and you have an airplane for yourself or share, sharing one with a friend and you are thinking of getting one of these systems for your aircraft but you are not sure which one to buy, which systems are compatible with each other. For this I'll uh, link the second part of this video series in the top right corner. It's time now though for you guys to get involved. Do you think what I'm saying is right? What are your experiences with traffic avoidance? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you think that what I'm saying is stupid and that I'm an idiot, let me know as well. Maybe however you find a nicer way to say so without hurting my feelings too much. That's it for this one. If you want to follow along on that channel, just make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel and then hit the little bell next to it, uh, next to the button so you'll be notified when there's a new video out. Keep a good lookout when you're flying out there and as always, all the best and many happy landings.